Hello and welcome to another special edition of Oncodelis virtual interview series. I'm Martin Harutunian, medical oncologist, palliative care specialist and director of Oncodeli LA. As part of our dedicated coverage of the 22nd International Conference of the Society for Integrative Oncology, we are highlighting leaders who are already fighting cancer care through integrative approaches. The Society for Integrative Oncology is at the far front of advancing evidence-based patient-centered care that blends conventional oncology with integrative therapies. This year's conference brought together experts from across the globe to share innovations, research breakthroughs, and collaborative strategies that are shaping the future of our oncology. Today, I am honored to be joined by Dr. Eliana Walker. Dr. Walker is a distinguished radiation oncologist and medical director of integrative services at the Henry Ford Cancer Institute. She also serves as division director of breast services and is institutional principal investigator for NRG Oncology. In addition to her clinical leadership, she chairs the Diversity, Equity, Inclusion and Justice Committee, underscoring her deep commitment to advancing equitable cancer care. Her research portfolio spans groundbreaking in- uh, initiatives including the XI trial, which investigates lifestyle interventions during and after cancer treatment and pioneering studies on acupuncture for breast cancer patients. She has also co-led projects aimed to, uh, at improving minority representation in clinical trials and reducing disparities in prostate cancer outcomes among black men. Dr. Walker, cancer uh, career exemplifies how integrative oncology can unite rigorous science, compassionate care, and a focus on equity to transform the future of cancer treatment. Dr. Walker, we are glad to have you with us today. Thank you, Martin. You're so kind. Um, I appreciate you inviting me to participate in this interview with you to talk about something that's dear to my heart, Society for Integrative Oncology. Thank you. Let's begin with the conference itself. What stood out to you about this year's SIO meeting and why was it meaningful for you? Well, it's meaningful to me because SIO has been around for 22 years and I was blessed to have participated in the inaugural meeting, which helped to strengthen a lot of the ideas I had about incorporating integrative medicine in oncology care. So this year, we are looking at the future. We were trying to bridge oncology and integrative medicine in a very evidence-based way. And I think we were able to accomplish that. You have been a leader in advancing integrative services at Henry Ford. What lessons from your institutional work do you think resonate most with the broader oncology community? Well, I think what resonates is how the Henry Ford Health System is very patient-centered. And the administrative, the C-suite, as we call it, is very supportive of their staff and new ideas and trying to integrate that, especially in oncology, not only with new treatments, but with the supportive integrative medical practices that patients practice on their own already and looking at the evidence and incorporating it into how we approach our patients. And I think people and my colleagues across the world admire how we've been able to do that. Um, thank you. The EXCITE trial has drawn attention for its focus on lifestyle interventions. Could you share what you have learned so far and how it might influence everyday cancer care? Well, the EXCITE trial, which stands for Exercise and Cancer Integrative Therapies Exercise Program, was started about 18 years ago between myself and one of our preventive cardiology exercise physiologist leads. And we both felt that it was very important that patients undergoing cancer care exercise during their treatment. And they looked at the food that they ate and for any treatment side effects, we had integrative medicine such as acupuncture that we could use to help patients. So once we did the initial pilot trial, and it was so positive, the uptake among my very skeptical colleagues at the time 
in terms of both integrative medicine and exercise for patients. Because our what we used to say to patients was, get some rest, just sleep, just sleep, don't do anything, don't exercise, don't lift anything heavy, which is the exact opposite of what we found was important and help patients do better during their treatment. So once my colleagues started hearing from their patients and seeing the benefits, this became something that was implemented at all our sites. Henry Ford Health System is a multi-site um, health system. We have five main sites with now the addition of several others in the Southeast Michigan area but we incorporated access to our exercise program at all these sites. Plus it's part of our EPIC, which is our electronic medical record order set. So anyone can go in and order this for their patients. Thank you. As you've mentioned, you've conducted research on acupuncture and symptom management. How do you see integrative therapies like these being more widely adopted to, uh, in mainstream oncology? I think over the years, people have seen the data. I'm not the only one. I may have been one of the early adapters in the Henry Ford Health System was, but because I was able to get a Coleman grant years ago and actually conduct a study that was finally published and was, I presented internationally on this and at ASCO, it was one of the top 10 studies presented at ASCO. It, that year, we were able to show the medical field that there is evidence. I mean, Chinese medicine, acupuncture has been around for over 5,000 years. So we can't doubt things, but SIO, it really believes in evidence space. So since we were able to show the evidence and my colleagues got the feedback from their patients, I'm telling you, patient feedback is so important. And in addition to the evidence, and that's what I think helped to spread this throughout the oncology community internationally. Thank you. Equity is central to your work. What are the biggest challenges and opportunities in ensuring integrative oncology reaches underserved communities? Well, I think that's the very thing, underserved. One, a lot of insurance companies still don't want to pay for it or they only partially pay for it. I think the VA system here in the United States is a great example of realizing the benefits of integrative medicine and exercise and patient wellness, looking at the whole patient, which is why they started the whole person health system and taught their providers how to do like battlefield acupuncture and it was shown to be more cost effective, which is why we have to encourage our um, insurance companies to support this, especially in underserved areas. And then access, having the providers available, having the ability to get the, to these providers. So things like teaching people um, acupressure, battlefield acupuncture, teaching them to exercise in their communities, finding ways to get patients to do things that make them feel good within their communities, such as dancing. We all, all cultures have traditional dances that they do. What does dance do? Well, it's an exercise, a form of exercise. It also releases endorphins that allow patients to feel better. And that this SIO meeting we just had in Boston, we had a wonderful workshop on traditional dance as a healing modality that looked at African dancing, um, the Latin dancing, and Hawaiian dancing. And there's actually data on each of these areas showing the benefits, not just to the oncology population, but to our health worldwide. So I think that's where Society for Integrative Oncology allowed us to see the cohesion of what is naturally part of our culture, what is the recommendation for exercise and helping our oncology patients. 
Thank you very much. This year's SIO theme emphasizes bringing cultures, embracing innovation, and fostering unity. How does your work embody these principles? I think I've been able to bridge the cultures. Detroit is a very multicultural city, although people don't think about that. We have the largest population of Arabs and Jews living in the same area outside of the Middle East. We have a large African-American population, a large Indian, and we have significant Asian and Spanish populations here. We have a very urban community that doesn't have a lot of access sometimes in terms of transportation to getting to different classes. Hence, part of our program is bridging these issues and bringing it to them. And so I think SIO has been very good about showing ways. We're giving you the evidence base, but we're also trying to bring the practical into this so that people can take the information they find at SIO and implement it wherever they are. And thank you. Looking ahead, you'll be sharing the SIO 2026 uh, conference in Detroit, which carries the motto cultivating community and belonging in integrative oncology. What vision are you bringing to that program and how do you hope Detroit as a host city will shape the experience? Well, I think one of the great things about Detroit, it has a very international airport. We're right across the river, literally from Canada which allows us to have a very international group of people and medical practices here. A lot of our medical staff at all the great hospitals that we have in the Southeast Michigan area are international, and they bring their culture and their history. And I think it's important for Detroit to show how we integrate it here, how we address it. Um, I think we learn more from each other as we work here. We have the University of Michigan. We have Henry Ford Health. We have Wayne State, Carmano's Cancer Center. um, We have Corwell. We have all these wonderful institutions that we all work with these different cultures and patients. And we have learned how to integrate it and address their concerns in a respectful manner while helping to heal them of their different disease processes. And um, thank you. And uh, on a personal note, what continues to inspire you to push boundaries in integrative oncology year after year and stay positive? Well, I think I grew up with that. I'm from Brooklyn, New York originally, but my family's from the Caribbean. So I've always had integrative medicine, what we call integrative medicine today, as part of my own personal culture. And I know how it has helped me by being mindful, by exercising Um, when I needed acupuncture, using acupuncture as needed for many different things. And so I want the feedback I get from my patients when I send them for these integrative therapies, the Reiki, the yoga, you know, dance, exercise, acupuncture, massage. The feedback that I get from them and their families encourages me. And the students that I mentor, I bring students um, from my alma mater, the University of Notre Dame, go Irish, (laughs) every year to work with me in the summer and be exposed to radiation oncology and oncology care in general. And the biggest thing they come back with is how patient-centered we are and how we help introduce patients to these modalities that can help them with minimal side effects that they can share with their families. People are exercising with their kids, whether it's, you know, supervised exercise or at home dancing for to a video and the joy that they get from this. So I think that's what helps me to continue doing this work. Dr. Walker, thank you for sharing your insights and experiences with us today. It's been a privilege to learn from your perspective. To our viewers, stay tuned for more conversations from the Society for Integrative Oncology's 22nd International Conference right here on Onco Daily. Good luck and take care.
Thank you very much. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Anka Daily on YouTube. Hit the bell icon to stay updated.